Hey guys, it's Nate, aka The Foot Accountant. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to look at my Endgame Club 198 squad and kind of just review the whole entire year of FIFA 22. What a year to remember it was. And what I want to do is just review some of that with you guys today from the red list pack luck to all the great content and the cards that I still have in my club to also the market and how I felt like we navigated the market this year on this account, how I felt like I did making coins with hitting some of my goals from FIFA 21 heading into 22 with hitting a certain transfer profit and number of coins. I was able to hit those goals and just kind of want to talk through some of that stuff and maybe even look ahead to FIFA 23 a little bit. Now, I did say this video is going to be coming a couple weeks ago when we looked at your guys' endgame teams, uh, and that was a lot of fun. But I want to take a look at mine today, and it's also just really fun to like document this for years to come, as I've done this for every single year that I've played FIFA Ultimate Team and posted YouTube videos. So we're going to take a look at some of my old endgame teams from previous years in today's video as well. So if you're excited for it, hit the thumbs up, and of course, subscribe if you're new. Let's start without ado. Without ado, the endgame squad no D, just vibes. No defense, just vibes. I started going 3-5-2 at the end of the year. And here's the endgame 198 squad featuring two 99 rated pack pulls with Ronaldo and Messi. The Messi pack pull, of course, came a few weeks. It was actually, I think, during the Shapeshifter promo or maybe like the first batch of cards that was re-released. But, um, you know, the Messi pack look this year was ridiculous. And that's the theme, right? You'll notice right away that we've got the OG the biggest pack pull of the entire year, 94R9. If you guys don't know the story, we packed 94R9 the second week of Division Rivals Rewards untradeable in FIFA 22. Literally, I've had this card all year long. It's crazy that this happened. I still cannot believe it. It'll go down as my best pack pull all time. It's going to be hard to top this because he was literally 11 and a half, 12 million coins when I packed his card untradeable. A thousand games played. I've never hit a thousand games played on a card before, but I had to do it with this card because he was just fantastic and phenomenal all year long. Towards the end of the year, his goals to game ratio really started to fall off, but that was because of all the objective preseason cup golden gold type stuff that we were playing so that doesn't help but definitely when i think of fifa 22 this card's going to be one of the first ones that comes to mind and this team at the end of the year i mean look at the cards that we have here man not all end game uh, or not all players that i would consider club legends really like these are all pretty recent cards i've had yashin for a while besides r9 most of these cards have come in the past maybe month and a half or so but a 198 squad with so many great cards on the bench um, from recent transfer cards to the showdown Ericsson, it was lovely. Uh, to even I included Kutier Mero in here because I used him in my team a lot. Um, and so that's that's the, the end game squad right there. But what I really want to cover and talk about some more are some of the legends. And I made a squad here called Club Legends just to look through and you know remember with me like some of these big pack pulls and how my team looked. Uh, throughout the year now of course r9 up top of this squad second most memorable player to me in fifa 22 100 would be this Lionel messi team of the year i still cannot i mean this one almost meant more to me than packing r9 big messy guy uh in real life love how he plays and this card especially in fifa was just un freaking believable i packed this card like it was literally 15 minutes before team of this years we're gonna go out of packs Got him in an upgrade pack. It was a true buzzer beater. It was a phenomenal time. And the messy finesses are something that I will never forget about FIFA 22. Long range finesse shots with this guy were just unbelievable and broken. And it was honestly kind of sad when I packed the shapeshifters um, and had to get rid of the messy card, which of course, this is the flex, right? When you look in the club and you see the messies, we packed the team of the season, didn't even play a game with it, packed the team of the year, and of course, pack the shapeshifter. So we have 97, 98, and 99 Messi all in the club. Ridiculous, I know. That just goes to, again, prove the red list pack look year that it was. But that card really meant a lot to me this year. It was a lot of fun to use. He was in every single squad that I had up until I packed the shapeshifter. You know, another card that was a beast for me this year, Team of the Year Conte. I mean, it's like the third time that I've packed a Team of the Year Conte, or maybe second. I packed him in FIFA 20, I think it was. Um, and I got Kimmich in 21. That's that's what it was. But this guy is always a workhorse. He was again for me this year. Best midfielder in the game, basically until the end game. After Tots, I still think he was the best midfielder in the game. Such a good card. 600 games played plus. Then some other club legends that are in here. Uh, three big team of the years this year that were in my team for a long time was the Hakimi, 
the Conte and the Messi. Flashback Benzema, of course, has to be mentioned. Uh, what a great value SBC that was at the time. What a great card. Flashback Neymar is up there. Flashback Varane, probably in terms of game played, would be up there. 588 games played for him on my account. Crazy card. You guys might remember some of these guys from being in my team for the longest time, like play the one to Bappe. I used to run a lot of Serie A on the left side. I mean, if you take a look, I ran Foot Fantasy Alexandro for 281 games. Before that, I ran the red Inform 87 Taylor Hernandez for 270 games. I think I did all versions of the Foot Cap or the, there was a Foot Captain's Chiellini, I think, but I did all three SBCs of Chiellini. I have the flashback still. I turned in the captain somewhere along the line and I have the end of an era, but this one was the one that I used the most in the mid to early game stages. He was fantastic after that card was released. Uh, I used Darmian for a while. He was, I would consider him a club legend for me and this Dina Talley. This guy kind of brought the team all together. 300 games, he had some great shooting stats as well. Of course, you can't think about this year without 87 Fakir, 387 games played for me as well. It was kind of funny. I was looking at my squad earlier on uh, this year in, in FIFA 22 and looking at the, the kind of players that I was using. This video was November 14th. So, you know, the game has been out for a month and a half by now, and I'm still using Rule Breakers Fellaini, the two icons that I packed in the early game of FIFA 22, Raul and R9, and then I just have gold cards in the team with a bunch of random good value SBCs that are on the bench. I was really stingy in FIFA 22, and that's something I think one of the things I want to get better at in FIFA 23 is not being as stingy. I mean, I'm still going to be very careful with coins, and I think that it, it benefits you in FIFA to be very careful with your coins. But I also want to have more fun. That's one of my first goals for FIFA 23 is just to have a little bit more fun and do more player SBCs, do more other SBCs, um, and just be able to card collect a little bit more. Because I, I did Bernardo Silva, I did Talishka, I did Fakir, right? The, um, the Fellaini objective that was during Rule Breakers. I still have that card in the club, but you know, I, I, I also skipped a lot of stuff even through the middle part of the year and I had plenty of coins to do it. It was just more of me being like, okay, I'm going to be really strict about saving my coins. So I think that one thing I would change for 23 is be a little bit less stingy, as I said, in terms of that stuff. But last few cards in here that are kind of club legends for me, this Desai, I used him a lot, but also this marks a very, you know, a very crucial time in the year of FIFA 22. This was from the mid or prime icon player pick SBC that was giving out the moments cards. I did the SBC on my phone in a flash, packed Desai moments, so I got a compensation pick. Didn't get anything good from that pick, but that was a crazy time when we were hoping for all that compensation from the mid or prime. And then, of course, a couple other cards in here. Kazo was an early game beast or, you know, December type beast for me. Veghorst is a FIFA 22 legend for everybody. What a card this was. He'll go down in history for sure. It's one of the most overpowered strikers in the game, just in a weird way. Uh, the heading stats that he had, he's nuts still to this day. At the end of FIFA 22, very good. And then probably, arguably, in my opinion, the craziest FIFA Ultimate Team mistake and happening of all time when all of the gold Ericsson cards just turned into the Foot Fantasy and then this card got upgraded. I'll never forget that. I'm so glad I had one in the club. That was fantastic. Um, and this card was pretty good. And of course, his uh, showdown card in the end game is really, really cracked as well. So speaking of a couple other cards that are in the club as club legends, you can see, I mean, the pack look this year has been ridiculous. All the cards that I showed you in that first main team, if I forgot to mention already, were untradeable. Um, of course, some of them were SBCs, but like all the stuff that we have in here, Marcelo packed first owner untradeable this year, Benzema. We packed the Ronaldo during one of the batches of, of footies, I believe it was. Um, you know, a lot of these cards I haven't even used, like Salah has 10 games on him and stuff like that, but the Sun I've barely used, Dina Talley I haven't even used this version, um, you know, some of the footies cards, I packed on Aruma during Team of the Year, you know, Mane actually, I, I did not do this card enough justice, I packed him during Premier League Team of the Season and untradeable this is the card that i packed and i only used in 28 games like that's bad honestly for me uh not using that card as much as i should have because that was a really really good card ben yetter i packed on the first day of league one tots this was a pretty crazy card uh used him for a while paqueta was another one i think of a league one tots card that did a lot for me this year was in my team for a long time uh, Player of the Month Ronaldo didn't really do much for me. Deli Ali during Prem Tots. I still think this is one of the better value 
Prem um, Tots SBCs, and one of the one of the better Prem team this season years we've ever had. Rodrigo was in there. There's the Paqueta card. Really liked this Wood center back for a while. He was a solid card. And then you've got a lot of fodder in here too from you know all the packs that are opened up right now. But the Red Davies I used a decent amount. The flashback Harry Kane. I know I have the Tots Harry Kane in my kind of club legend side, but this flashback Harry Kane card was great as well. Love both of those. Of course, being a Spurs fan, that helps out there. Bunch of other kind of just random cards that are in the club still. Foot birthday Sergio Ramos was a nice one. Um, the Phil Foden Tots card was a solid one. Kudusevsky, good amount of games played on him. Amine Guri was a, a really good card as well. I barely used him, but he was pretty good. Um, you know, some other cards in here. I kept the Maxi Morales around. Shortest player in FIFA, five foot two. Haven't really used him for too many games, but that was a good card. A Gavardio was a really good card. Kalia Guri, right? This is a card to remember. 71 games played. Really insane card during Foot Fantasy. That Mkhitaryan Foot Birthday was great. First owner packed untradeable Mbappe. It's the only Mbappe that I've ever packed. No other versions have I packed of him. Tried to get a Tots card or the team of the year in the end game. Wasn't able to do it. Braithwaite White Showdown. Lo Celso I used a bit. Griezmann. You know, I still kept the Ozil. Have the Defoe. Uh, I think I have the Akinfenua. There he is as well. I used this Weston McKenney Showdown for, for a while. Still have him. Still have the Dobbinson Sanchez. Corais Modest. Um, Pulisic, uh, you know, this was a weird one. I took the ice Pulisic for the skills instead of the weak foot, which a lot of people did, but that was a fun card. The Ryan Kent just didn't live up to the Ryan Kent hype this year as he did in previous years. Uh, Awar was an early game legend as well. You know, I, I did the Fellaini. Here's the Fellaini that was in my early game team, 114 games played. So I don't have any of the gold cards, of course, that I used, but I mean, there might even be a few silvers in here that were in that silver promo, but that's besides the point. What a club, right? And an incredible, incredible pack pulls this year. A lot of red list luck. A lot of really good SBCs that we have done along the way to get a really, really cracked team and a fun year. But seriously, for me, it's this Ronaldo and it is this Messi to top it off. Uh, for me, is the top two players that mean the most and also that did the most for my ultimate team this year. Now, let's talk trading. Let's talk, um, you know, well, let's talk record first. 585 games. I just broke the thousand game barrier, but I think this doesn't count. I think if I added this up correctly, it's like a thousand and seven or a thousand and five games. And my R9 has a thousand and twenty eight. So that really makes no sense. Um, I think there's something off there, but um, you know, that's a normal year of FIFA for me. I think that just does not count some friendlies or some of the golden goal modes or something. Um, but you know, hiding the record this year was pretty interesting. It used to be, of course, on the top by your coins. Uh, I think that's staying the same for FIFA 23. That was really interesting. And then leaderboards. I want to talk about this too. It kind of, you know, turn it into a market kind of conversation. My transfer profit right now is 110 million coins. It's actually down a lot uh, because I wasted a lot of coins and burned a lot of coins in the past basically two months. I stopped trading after team of the season was over. I stopped for real. Maybe one or two times from here and there, I kept going a little bit. But I peaked at 120, I think, right around 120 million transfer profit, which going into this year of, uh, of FIFA 22, I was really hoping to hit that 100 mil mark, and I absolutely went out and did that. That was a GG, started pretty good from the year, uh, and then after team of the year, really turned it on, really cranked it up. I think the most coins I ever had total liquid was about 24 to 25 million coins during team of the season i think it was right at the beginning of tots before we started spending a lot of coins on packs and stuff and like that so you know that it was a good year of trading it really really was i felt like i had plenty of coins to do whatever sbcs i really wanted to do maybe not so much earlier in the game but it's in the second half of the year felt like we did very very good trading wise um now just to talk about the market a little bit more and then we'll look at some older end game teams here in a second uh you know the market for me this year was a lot of fun. It was it was a blast. Starting from the beginning of the year where I traded with this guy. I mean, I, I'll even pull him up and, and look at his name. Daniel Carrico. This guy has a non-rare gold who's expensive right now, like 1.8K. A Portuguese center back that, you know, in FIFA 21, I made a bunch of coins on him because of SBC Solutions. And just because he's a Portuguese center back, watch out for that in FIFA 23. Um... You know, these guys just fluctuate so much in the beginning of the game and in the early game time period that he was such a great card to trade with and uh, amazing, amazing coin maker for me. I mean, I remember going, I think I even went unassigned one time on buying a bunch of these at like 
800, 900 coins and then selling them all at 3K, making a couple hundred thousand coins a day on this guy in the early game for a couple days in a row. Like that was a really big early game profit maker for me. And then I actually have some tweets pulled up of some trades that I did during the year. Usually I, I trade every or I tweet every once in a while that I'm trading just to kind of post a little bit of a summary. Some of my biggest moves this year, this, this is the one that I remember the most. Um, it was a really, really short flip. Like, I mean, I think the time on my phone here is like 11.20 a.m. Um, and I, I sold a lot of these Lucas Morris uh, from between like 900 and 950K. I bought 16 of them, um, a, a, more, a flip, kind of in the morning time. There was a bunch of panic selling and then I bought some and then I sold them after he went up. Of course, I had a lot of coins. I had 14 mil at least when I was making these moves. But I think on this morning, I made literally a million coins in... I, th I think it was only like an hour. Like the, the flip was so fast. And that was the biggest thing. Like if I think about how I made my coins the most this year, it was absolutely from panic selling and then selling on the rebound, right? There was so much panic selling in FIBA 22. And I think that that's something that I'm glad that I got good at or, or that I really started to get good at during the year. Not always is it perfect because when panic happens and panic hits, it's just sell, sell, sell. And it's really hard to time that low point and to try to figure that out. Um, but I think I really learned this year to be um, a lot better at timing those drops and making profit off of those drops. Now you see here, like I bought Suarez for 1.187, sold them at like 135. So a lot of stuff like that, where it was quick flips over a couple hours time period, or especially with rewards, like Monday mornings uh, were really good days. And even if I think back to like rivals rewards, uh, the market rose really nicely on rivals reward days as well. Vlahovic bought for 519, sold for 569, 570. So a lot of just those really small, not small, but those really quick flips and a small time frame. That's where I feel like I made a lot of my coins this year. And I think that's going to be pretty consistent with me in FIFA 23 as well. Um, I, I think the market's going to be pretty similar. My biggest flip ever in terms of kind of the most risky one, I bought a Pushkas. I believe I bought it right before a stream. I had 7 million coins and I bought this guy. I went absolutely broke. I had 35K left, bought him for 7.7 seven mil. He was brand new, right? On the web app, it didn't even have the, the icon moments names. Uh, in there yet. And I sold them later that stream for 8.4 early on. You can see I was trading with some of the moments cards. You know, icons were used to be a place where I traded with a ton. Like in FIFA 21, I made a lot of coins on icons. I was just consistently flipping them, flipping them. I feel like for whatever reason, I think it just had to do with FIFA 22, the icons were not that OP. So only around release dates when like the primes came out or when the moments came out or the early game was I really interested in a lot of icons and trading with them just because they weren't that hype. Um, and, you know, I think that's why there was a bit of a step down of that uh, from FIFA 21 to 22, but still made some nice uh, flips on icons during the year for sure. That was a nice money maker. And then I specifically remember some of these. I was on like vacation, I think at the, at the time. Uh, I bought some Hollands at like 945 and then sold them for 1.06 like a couple hours later. Like that's the sort of thing that I was doing a lot of trading with in the early stages was the quick flip. So that's probably going to be where I make a lot of my coins in FIBA 23 as well is just finding the quick flips, finding the promo cards that move a lot um, and, and flipping them in a short time span, right? And, you know, we think about road to the knockout cards as really good cards to buy when there's panic selling and then sell when, you know, the, the panic selling stops and stuff like that. That's absolutely still going to be a thing this year. But I think with the content being as consistent or even more consistent in FIFA 23 as it was in 22, I really just think that that's going to kind of bring more opportunities to trade in that same way with the quick flips. And that's definitely my favorite way to trade. I think it's some of the less risky ways to trade as well because you're not holding on to cards for very long. And especially the way they do promos now and cards prices now, if you're holding on to cards for a super duper long time, you're going to end up losing a lot of coins just because that's how this game is designed these days. So, you know, I think I'm going to make a lot of coins off of that same kind of method in FIFA 23. I at least hope so. The one thing I want to get better at this year, though, is, is fodder. I really do. And I, I want to get better at watching the fodder market and being in tune with it at all times. Uh, but also... Um, being able to like look up a fodder card like Tony Cruz, I'm sure. Is this gold card in packs right now? It might not be, but you know, just being more in tune with SBC fodder because after the first month of the game, fodder is the best way to make coins 
you know, I'll just say it as a blanket statement. SPC fodder is the best way to make coins in FIFA. That is the number one way to make coins, most consistent and less risk. All you have to do is wait, right? Time is on your side. There are specific times of the year where fodder is almost always getting expensive. I think of like November and March as two times in the past couple of years where fodder has absolutely peaked. Um, and it's a good, you know, thing to remember for FIFA 23, but you know, fodder makes weekly fluctuations and it's, it's so easy to trade with because, um, there's always content that's getting released, right? Think about, you know, player SBCs and especially when we have leaks and stuff like that. So doing, doing more of like the club stock and doing more of that kind of stuff this year. It's going to be more important for me. Now, I'm not sitting here and telling you that I plan to go unassigned a lot this year because that is exactly not the case. I don't plan to buy hundreds of David Silva's or Harry Maguire's and go unassigned for weeks on end and, you know, making a lot of coins, which that can be very profitable. And if, if you want to do that, like this year is going to be a great year to do that in FIFA 23 for sure, as it was in 22. But again, as I'm saying, just for me, I really think that. I'm just going to pay attention more to that market this year. Inform investing was really popular in FIBA 22, um, even with informs being supplied more than ever because of weekend league rewards. So we'll kind of get into the nitty gritty of that stuff, of course, as we get closer and closer to FIBA 22. But I just wanted to make this video today to kind of flex the endgame club and the endgame team a little bit. Just the last thing really quick. I, I didn't mention this before when we were looking at the team, but this is absolutely the best uh, the best endgame team that I have ever had. Just taking a look back at my FIFA 21 endgame squad, that's just a testament to the pack luck and the content this year, right? This is my FIFA 21 endgame team. Uh, had the Rashford in there. That was probably my best pack pull in FIFA 21. You know, a couple nice SBCs like the 99 Messi transfer, the 98 Ramos, the 98 Acuna that everybody loved, right? Really, really good card, really good side. Um, but then if you look back at some of my older FIFA squads, well, first here is my transfer profit. So, Big upgrade from FIFA 21, 56 mil transfer profit, FIFA 21, 120 mil this year. So basically doubled. That's the full time effect right there for you. Um, but then if we go back and take a look at my FIFA 20 squad, uh, I had 98 Mbappe, 98 Neymar, and 97 Benyetta that I packed during League One Tots. Still had that 98 7 Conte that was in there. Uh, some summer heat cards. You see this Latan, the Ericsson. So I think that this would have been the team closest to an endgame squad that I have now, but definitely my squad in FIFA 22 blows that out of the water. And then my FIFA 19 squad had the team of the year Neymar and Mbappe that I bought, not packed. I think I bought that Ronaldo as well. I bought a lot more cards in FIFA 19, but those are my endgame squads from those previous years. And then, um, oh, that was my early game squad from that year too. So, you know, it's just, it's just a lot of fun to look back on where you have gone this FIFA and just kind of remember the year. I know we've been doing that in a couple of videos now on the channel, but I just want to make this fun one today to look at my club. As, as you, Of course, you guys have kind of come along the ride with me, and that's kind of the interesting thing about posting videos, right, is I don't always update you on how my squad looks and how my team looks, but a lot of you guys watch the stream, so you know what packs we're doing, you know what pack pulls that we get and stuff like that. So it's kind of just fun to look back on the progression of the year to what we have had and what to, we've been able to achieve and, and what we've been able to get really good year for the spurs untradeable team as well just to flex that off at the very end some really nice cards here in the, even the past two weeks that were charleston transfer the parasitch transfer so really good year for the spurs team i mean that, the same can be said for united for city for chelsea for liverpool so many special cards this year i think it's just going to continue in fifa 23 with the great content and more cards than ever so stay tuned for more fever 23 videos it's gonna get serious real quick looking ahead into fever 23 but if you enjoyed today's video and you've enjoyed the year of fever 22 hit the thumbs up comment down below if you have any questions and subscribe if you're new it's been nathan for the count catch you guys later peace out